how we came up with dipping sauce. It was uh, it was a lot of trial and error, you know, coming up, uh, uh, being guides trying to find something different that no one else is using and everything. So uh, I came out with some uh, true fishing oils and, and used them out on the water. It became very, 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 very uh, successful with uh, one brand right off the get-go. We called it our salmon sauce. Uh -huh. Yeah, instantly it, we were catching more fish. Uh -huh. And people wanted to you know, see what we had and what we did. So we had a, a good friend of ours you know, saying that we had to market this stuff. So eventually we, we marketed it and went into a couple stores right off the get-go. Sold quite a few uh, bottles and so we started branching out from there. So uh, the big difference with ours compared to a lot of different sauces is ours is true fishing oil. 100% uh, oil, and then we add our different uh, goodies mixed into a base that we have, and, and now that, that now that we have nine different scent lines, it, it's going really good. I started uh, researching this when I was a science teacher, and uh, what had happened is we taught about the, the life cycle of the, the salmonoid mammal, which includes all the trout mammal. And uh, in my research, I, I found uh, a product that uh, gave me a hint as to what that family liked to eat on. So I researched it deeper and deeper and uh, finally found out what it was. We came out and tried it, sampled it, and right away, got a lot of fish. Uh, Jerry's got a friend out in the Puget Sound that uses the salmon for crap. Really? And, and yeah, he, he tested it against what he normally does, and he would catch generally four or five crab in his normal pot, and inside of the other one, he would put one of these rubber gloves and poke a hole in it, so the sauce would ooze out, and he had something like 30-something crab in there, and he goes, wow. And people say, hey, it's working for perch, it's working for walleye and for garlic. It's one of our patents. Uh, we're uh, the only people in the, in the United States that can put a, a wing in, in the head of a bait. Uh, this is Moneymaker Scent Bomb. It's a scent flasher. Um, it's the only scent flasher on the market. It's designed to, to disperse scent. So it disperses scent to the dodger, which is going back and forth. So it's giving you uh, a bigger scent radius on your bait. Inside the, uh, the scent bomb, we have a, a soaker, scent soaker, and then we kind of marinate it to start with. So it's fully loaded with uh, sauce and uh, then we take it out and put it in the in the set bomb itself. Uh, we started out using tuna fish and marinating that and tuna fish works just fine, a lot of people use that but with this set pad you fill it once in the day where it's all marinated inside of it. It's full and by the end of the day you can still squeeze some of it out of there so it's dispersing it throughout the day. But when it does come in, we do uh, refill it uh, by squirting it with our smaller bottle, squirt bottle. And it just helps maintain that scent in there longer. And so uh, there's no more tuna you have to buy and uh, put unless you want to use all your sandwiches. Uh, but I like those scent soakers. They keep that scent in there for a while. I don't have to, to uh, rebate, rescent it very often. And I do the same thing. And I'm actually running two sauces today. So they get the garlic on the one end and then the krill anise on the bait, and uh, it seems really effective. This in particular was a pink and glow setup, and this is a four, four and a half inch model. On this scent bomb, you can open it up. There's a little rubber band on the end of it that you can open up. And inside of this, what we had today, was an accessory that we sell with these bombs. It's called a scent soaker pad. With the scent soaker pad, you can see how all the flavor and all the juices are still inside here. Right, and so, so it's saturated. So when this spins through the water, you put the, you know, the scent bomb down, put the rubber tubing back over the, the end of it, and you're good to go. You dip this inside your favorite super dipping sauce flavor, and we have that held up on the line by a bead and a bobber stock. Now you can put that whatever distance out in front of it. We were running them 12 inches all the way up to 18 inches. You can slide that bobber stop up and put it however many feet or inches above what we were using today, which was a Shasta Tackle swing board. This is the six inch model that we're using here. And then from there, we're using about a 12 inch leader to this particular setup here was our coconator setup. This here has a one and a half inch uh, shaker wing that in particular, this was a red setup. 
getting down to uh, a number two hook to a number four treble hook. All UV and everything set up here so when this goes to the water, the shaker wing, it actually shakes back and forth, forth along with the Shasta tackle, sling blade. This was a deadly setup for us today. Online, our Kokanee setup is available online this year. We're not putting them into stores, so you can buy them online. Moneymakerfishing.com. Uh, my favorite way of cooking these, you know, it's a nice red meat on them. And what I'll do here also is I'll, I'll flay them off, but then flay the, the bones off the belly, take the backbone out right here, and then I'll put a, a layer of tin foil down and everything, put this inside. From there, I'll, I'll put some mayonnaise over the top of them, then put some Johnny seasoning, uh, a little bit of basil, a little bit of onion, a little bit of lemon. Put a little butter around the sides of the tin foil. Put it on 350 or so. You can barbecue it or bake it for about 20, 25 minutes. Perfect, awesome, very tender, awesome fish. <laughs> and what the stump likes to do, stump, uh, I like to pan fry it. I get my pan nice and hot, uh, filled with butter. And then what I like to do is get some creole seasoning. Get it nice and seasoned with creole. I flop the meat side down, of course I, I get the, all the bones off of it, get the pin bones out too, get the creole seasoning on it, put it on that nice hot butter, let it sizzle for about two minutes, flip it over with the skin on it, let it sizzle for about two minutes, about four minutes you're done cooking and that skin peels right off and it's ready to go on the plate. It's really red meat. It is.